Whether it's drawing, animation, illustration, and even music and film, we have to strive for improvement to get better at our craft. But the thing about improvement is that you're not constantly climbing up. There'll be pitfalls, there'll be multipaths. But all in all, this is a cycle that repeats. Hey guys, it's Siniko Pantoa, and today I'd like to talk about improvement. And because I work in animation, I deal with drawing, storytelling, illustration, character design, 2D animation, storyboarding. So I constantly find myself learning about these things and having to improve on myself within this medium. But if you've been practicing for a long time, we can both agree that improvement is a lifetime journey. But a thing that beginning artists tend to mistake is that improvement is a steady climb up. You're getting better no matter what. But I would say it's more like a stock market chart. Things go up, things go down. You make good art, you make bad art. You are happy, you are sad. Sometimes it goes really high up, sometimes it goes really down. Or sometimes it goes in a completely different direction. So why is that? And this is where I want to talk about the never ending cycle that always happens in your overall growth. And why I find doing the practice that I do, which is animation and storytelling, really frustrating. Now, when it comes to improvement, I do believe that there is a cycle. And I think the first stage of the improvement cycle is the birth stage. So you're basically doing things for fun, whether it's drawing, illustration, animation, or anything art related. You get into it because it interests you. You're doing things with no standards, or sometimes you're doing things that will just make you laugh or bring you joy. From here, you're kind of just exploring and just experimenting. Then we move on to the get learned or the gain knowledge stage. So maybe you've shown interest where you do want to get better at this. Maybe you want to learn more about it. So you start thinking about theories. You start thinking about or picking up some methodologies or techniques or procedures. This could be taking a class or learning a tutorial step by step at how to draw something or how to make something. The main takeaway is you want to improve in this craft. You want to learn more about it. Maybe you want to learn more about animation or maybe you want to learn more about human anatomy. You start looking into resources that kind of focus on that stuff. So you keep studying, you keep gaining knowledge, and then all of a sudden, something starts to stick. I like to call the stage the epiphany stage. Things start to click and you kind of get a feeling that things that were unclear to you suddenly become clear. You start to feel a bit more confident in your approach because of this new thing that you picked up. It's kind of like you've been enlightened. So now you want to give this discovery or this new thing that you learned more of a spin. Now we move on to the next stage, which is the groove is good or you have good momentum. So because of this epiphany and enlightenment, maybe you feel highly motivated because of this new procedure or this new approach. So now you're exploring it, you're experimenting with it, you're being highly productive, you're whipping out a lot of stuff. You'll just feel highly motivated and sometimes you'll have the feeling where your art just suddenly improved. So as you're producing more work, you're experimenting, you're finessing this new approach, this new technique, this new skill, and you keep doing it until you have a decent understanding of it. And now you feel like you're in a good spot. So I kind of like to call this the golden Gucci stage. So this is where you feel like you're at a good state. So maybe you're producing some of your best work. Now, just to be clear, this stage is more of a feeling. It's not like you actually think you're the best artist out there or you're on top of the world. I would say that the feeling is more about you're producing work that you're proud of and that you have a feeling where no matter what, things will just go uphill from here. You're just going to constantly improve. There's not going to be any pitfalls or whatnot, and it'll be a steady growth from here. But unfortunately, that's not really true. And I'm sure a lot of artists out there can agree. And like I said, the last stage was the pinnacle. Now we move on to the end of an era. So this is where there's a lot to talk about here. And there's a lot of factors that come into play in this, but this is where something overstates its welcome. It's a feeling where things start to get a little stale. And maybe this approach that you've been toying with isn't the solution to everything. Oh yes, and when I talk about approach, it's more of a general term when it comes to mindset, technique, methodology, procedure. It could be an abstract thing that affected your approach to your own work. But like I said, there are many factors that can lead to the end of an era stage. So maybe you feel challenged. Maybe you've come across a problem you can't really solve. Maybe you face criticism about your work. Maybe you start comparing yourself to other people and suddenly you start to realize weaknesses and faults with your approach. So an example of this is maybe this approach has become more of a crutch, more of a habit. And the thing about habits is that they're hard to get out of. Now we move on to the self massacre stage. Okay, maybe that's a little dramatic. But I would say this state is more about doubt than anything. 
So maybe this is where a lot of self-destructive tendencies happen with your journey in art. You're constantly trying to make things, but they're not turning out as good as you hoped. You've set such a high standard for it already, and that when you can't hit that standard you have for it, you just feel down about it. Maybe you're trying to break out of a habit, but like I said, habits are still hard to get out of. Now, depending on who you are, what your mental health and what your emotional health is like, you could be very self-destructive and self-sabotaging. So for me, for example, I was highly cynical, I was pessimistic, I felt like I was betrayed for the craft, by the craft, and by my peers involved in it. So at this stage, you're losing motivation, you become down on yourself, you think that this medium is no longer for you, or you don't deserve to be in this line of work. Maybe you feel like you're producing crap. Maybe you start hitting art blocks, like really bad art blocks. The only thing I can say about this stage really is, it sucks to be here. You know how when it comes to art and productivity, there's a good day and there's a bad day? Well, it might seem the ratio of bad days for you might be really high here. And then we hit the death stage. And no, it's not as dramatic as I make it sound. But I'm pretty sure that some of you guys have been in a state where maybe the momentum is no longer there at the moment. Maybe the art block has become so bad that you just can't do anything with it. So maybe you start reflecting more about your work or yourself, and maybe you start taking a break from the craft. Maybe you start taking up other hobbies, or you start taking care of things that are important in your life right now. You start to realize that the approach that you had that helped contribute your overall growth in this cycle of your improvement journey just becomes another tool that you can use some other time. And that's what these approaches are. They're just tools that one could use in different circumstances. And we close this loop, this cycle, with the rebirth. You start doing things because you love it again, or you just want to do something just for the sake of it, or you do stuff with zero standards. It's doing the thing because it's fun. And maybe one day, a new journey, a new cycle will start with a new approach that you discover along the way. Whether it's information, a theory, an approach, or mindset, you never know. And that's basically how I would wrap up the cycle of this never-ending journey of improvement. Now, there's a bunch of things that you need to know about improvement in general. It's not just a one-way climb up to the mountain. There's multiple paths one could take. So let's say you've drawn in a realistic style for such a long time, and then suddenly say you want to be cartoony or more graphic, you're probably going to have to switch up your paradigm to be able to do that. The next thing I want to talk about is everyone treats improvement very differently, so the cycle I have might be a bit dramatic, and for some people it might be much more gentler, or for others it might be chaotic and much more hectic. You also have to consider that people take in information and approach very differently, so some people might seem like they're learning and improvement much faster, whereas other people might have to take more time for that. And like I said, it depends on the circumstance, right? So if you're really good at cartoony stuff, you're going to probably be better and faster at dealing with things that are more related to animation and cartoons. Some people can improve by drawing hundreds of things over and over again and fill their room with sketchbooks, whereas other people can improve by just spending time on a few things and then actually spending more time on reflecting what they learned out of that experience. Now, the last thing I want to say about improvement is that maybe there might be a time where you feel like you're not improving at all or maybe that the previous approaches that you've had were just a waste of time or you feel like you didn't grow. And I don't think that's necessarily true. Like I said, if you're really passionate and ambitious with your craft, whether it's animation, illustration, music, it's probably going to be a long-term or lifetime journey. But then in this journey, this cycle will always come into play in many different episodes. But from each of these experiences, you learned something. You learned the advantages, the disadvantages, the things that were great and not so great. And it's helped flesh out your overall paradigm, the roadmap to how you approach your work, what you would do now and what you would not do again because of that experience. You learned something out of it. You grew from that. And all of this and all contributes to your identity. And if one could say, your art style. And if you're feeling frustrated in your journey, that is normal, but I would also recommend you start writing how you feel about your own work. Because a big part of that frustration is not understanding why you're frustrated in the first place. So having a thought journal helps. Anyways, that's all I'm gonna talk about, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. 
visit the store through the link in the description below.